Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation here at the IEEE Sensors Conference. My name is Sina Rede and I'm happy to see that you all joined this session. I hope that you will enjoy the topic. Since one and a half years now, I work at the Institute for Microsensors, Actuators and Systems at the University of Bremen, which is also part of the Microsystem Center Bremen in Germany. All my co-authors work at the same institution. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about a flow sensor of which a sensitive element is fabricated by two-photon polymerization inside a microfluidic channel. And the sensor signal is read with an optoelectronic system. My research focuses on two-photon polymerization, uh, especially on flexible or movable parts inside a microfluidic channel. Um, in case you are not familiar with this technique, it's a 3D printing process with a very high resolution. Instead of using the energy of one photon, the energy of two photons is used that are absorbed at nearly the same time. Uh, in order to have two photons at the same time in the same position, uh, the intensity of the light has to be very high, which is only the case in the focal point of a laser beam. And by guiding this focal point of the laser beam through the resin, this 3D structure is achieved. And here we want to use this technique to fabricate a structure that can deflect with the flow. So when the drag force of the flow acts on the surface, um, this curved part of the, of the structure deflects. Um, and the middle part, the massive part, is shifted into a light path and switches the light off. Um, and that we want to use as a um, flow sensor without having electrical contacts in the liquid. Here you can see the sensitive element in more detail. The large flat area is to ensure the adhesion to the chip. And then we have the curved part, which is a one micrometer thin spring. It has a height of 48 micrometer in a 50 micrometer high channel, so that we use all the height that we can get. Uh, the massive part in the middle has a diameter of 20 micrometer, which was the largest that we could fabricate without having a collapsed structure. As material, we used IP-DIP because it's quite flexible, and we printed this with, uh, the structure with the objective with a magnification factor of 63, because um, we need this very high resolution for the one micrometer thin spring. Um, to fabricate one structure, it takes only about one minute. So for an entire wafer, we need only fabrication time of about one to two hours. Here you can see the chip design. In the middle, there's a channel with a width of 120 micrometers, and it is 50 micrometers deep. And for the test, it's filled with water. At the top and the bottom of the chip, we have two recesses where we can couple in glass fibers. Um, and then we have in the middle of the chip a waveguide that splits into three light paths. So the light comes from the top. Um, the cladding material of the waveguide is air and the core is made of SU8. And then the light is focused by three lenses to the center of the channel. And after the channel, the light is collected again by three waveguides that end in one waveguide so that we have only one output signal that we can measure. Um, then we have the three microstructures here. They all have a different deflectability. And when a flow is applied from the right side to the left side, um, they deflect and block the light. We use three structures with different deflectability in order to increase the range of the sensor. If we would have only one um, element, then we could only say whether a certain flow velocity is exceeded or not, but this way we can have an actual sensor. For the fabrication, we use a silicon chip with SU8 for the channel walls, because we need a transparent material in order to couple the light into the chip. Um, in order to use all the light that we can get, we have to level the fiber core with the channel. So we have to etch the silicon a little bit deeper so that the fiber cladding is inside the silicon. Um, as a thickness for the core, 
we chose 50 micrometers because for example with 100 micrometers we were not able to polymerize the sensitive elements inside the channel um, because too much light was blocked by the channel walls. So in order to fabricate this chip we have to protect the channel area during the silicon etching. Therefore we use silicon uh, with a silicon dioxide layer on top of it and in the first step we structure the silicon dioxide so that only the channel area is covered with the dioxide to protect it during the etching later. Um, after that we apply TI prime as adhesion promoter and then spin coat SU8 and structure it so that the SU8 is removed in the recess areas for the fibers and the cladding of the waveguides and the lenses. And then in the next step we etch the silicon um, using the SU8 and the silicon dioxide as a mask. After that we dice the wafer into the chips and then we apply this adhesion promoter and then we can uh, fabricate the sensitive elements by two photon polymerization. Here you can see a scanning electron microscope image of the chip. So at the top and at the bottom we have the waveguides, then the lenses and uh, in the middle the microstructures inside the channel. They all have a different spring thickness. So at the left side we have 0.5 micrometer, then 1 micrometer and then 1.5 micrometer at the right side. Uh, and you can see that the first one collapsed, so that was too thin. The second one looks quite good. And the third one is already a little bit open, so that part of the light might already be blocked. So we chose the 1.0 micrometer thick springs for the next steps. The housing consists of three parts that were 3D printed. So in the bottom part we put in the sensor chip and then the fibers. Um, on top of that we put another 3D printed part uh, that is transparent and has a flexible layer at the bottom side to seal the channel. Um, this part has two holes for the inlet and outlet and the inlet and outlet are sealed to the top part by o-rings. Um, and in the top part we have a look-through window in the middle so that we can observe what happens in the channel. And then we have the inlet and outlet from the sides where we can glue in some tubes. In order to fabricate this transparent flexible part um, we need to exchange the resin during the printing process so we stop it at a certain layer then we uh, clean the platform and the already printed parts uh, with isopropyl alcohol without removing the parts from the platform. Then we put in the platform again into the same position and exchange the resin and then we print the last layers with the flexible material. When we do that we have a quite rough surface um, at the adhesion side to the platform because this platform is quite rough um, and here the light is scattered so that we cannot really observe the channel through this part. So we have to smoothen this surface uh, that is done by putting a droplet of resin on top of it and then putting a glass light on it um, in order to get the smooth surface. Then we expose it and then we remove the glass light again. Yeah, I'm going to show you a video of the deflection of two of the microstructures. You can see them from the top. They both have a different width so that they are attacked by the drag force. And when we apply a flow from the right side, the first structure starts to move to this point at 50 microliters per minute, to this point at 100 microliters per minute, and with 150 microliters per minute also the second one moves. Um, when we stop the flow, both go back to their initial position so that we can repeat the measurement. Um, you can also see that the waveguides and the lenses fill a little bit with water, but we already improved the holder design 
so that it seals more tightly and we don't have this problem anymore. For the optoelectronic readout, you can see here the optical path. As a source, we used an LED laser with a wavelength of 530 nanometers. Then you can see all the chip integrated parts that we already discussed. And at the output, um, the fiber is coupled uh, to the photodiode using a collimator. And the photodiode uh, transduces the signal into a voltage which is measured with the oscilloscope. Um, here you can see an example measurement. So we applied flow rates between 50 and 300 microliter per minute, and the voltage dropped from about 260 millivolts to 22 millivolts. Um, you can see that at about 100 microliter per minute, the voltage did not drop. Um, that's because one of the structures did not move yet. So the first structure moved at 50 microliter per minute and then the other two structures started at 150 microliter per minute. So we successfully fabricated two PP structures that deflect with the flow and block a light path. And we were able to measure the voltage drop with the photodetector for flow rates between 50 and 300 microliter per minute. Um, the signal varies for each chip, so we have to improve the fiber coupling and then we have to do some repeatability tests and long-term stability tests in order to see whether this works as a sensor. That was it for now. I want to thank all my co-authors for all the work they've done and thank you for listening. See you soon in the questions and answers session.